Hey everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you my favorite top 14 tips and tricks in the Outlook calendar. There are lots of good ones that are gonna help you save time. If you wanna jump around this video, feel free to use the timestamps down below. All right, let's jump on the PC. Tip number one, I can use natural language to set the meeting start time in Outlook. Let's say that I have a coworker who wants to meet, I don't know, in seven weeks. To figure that out, I'd have to click on the calendar icon and here I'd have to count forward seven weeks. Now, was it the 25th or was it the first? I lost track, so I'd have to go back and count it again. Instead, I could let Outlook do the heavy lifting for me. Here, I'll highlight this date and I'll simply type in, in seven weeks. Then I'll hit enter and Outlook determines what that date is for me. Now, along with that, I could also type in something like, hey, let's meet the second Monday in July. Then I'll hit enter and it looks like that's July 12th. When I click on the calendar icon here, I can confirm that July 12th is in fact the second Monday in July. I could also set different holidays. Let's say I wanna know, hey, what about Christmas? Let's meet on Christmas. When I hit enter here, it figures out that it's December 25th. So it's pretty smart in figuring out what these dates are. But before you think it's all knowing, it doesn't get every date right. I don't know why. But here, if I type in something like Thanksgiving and hit enter, I get this ugly error message. It might be because Thanksgiving falls on different days every year, but I do know that it's the last Thursday in November. So here I could type in last Thursday and let's type in November, hit enter, and it looks like it's 11 2021 Tip number two, you can use the date navigator to view your calendar in whatever way you want to view it. Now, right now I'm in the week view of my calendar. And if I go up above, there are a few different predefined views. I could view just the individual day, the work week, the week, the month, and there's even a schedule view. But what if I wanna see even more time or what if I just wanna see some specific dates? Let's first look over at the date navigator over here on the left-hand side. So right now I'm currently viewing the month view. And so I see a little bit of April and a little bit of May. If I wanna see more months coming up here, I could drag this and here now I see three months. Here I could even drag this area and I could pull it out and here I could see half a year all in one view. Now with all these different views here, especially the month view, I just see the full month. What if I just wanna see, let's say two weeks on my calendar. So maybe this week and the upcoming week. I can go over here and right over on the left-hand side of the weeks, my cursor changes. And here I could highlight this week and I could click and drag down to cover two weeks. So now I could just limit my view to two weeks. Or even here I could highlight three and then I could see three. So I could select what time period I wanna see by dragging my mouse. Now let's say, let me jump into the day view here. Let's say someone wants to schedule a meeting with me and they give me a few different options. Maybe they say, hey, I can meet on the 14th, the 16th or the 29th. Does 3 p.m. on any of those days work? Now, typically I'd probably click into the 14th and the 16th and I'd go through day by day trying to see which one works the best. Instead, I can view all of these dates at the same time. Right now I'm on the 14th and I'll press the control key and click on the 16th and I'll click on the 29th. And so now you see, I have those three days all side by side. So I could look at my calendar and say, oh, 3 p.m. Well, that works for me on the 16th or on the 29th. Tip number three, you can reply to an email thread with a meeting and it'll preserve all of the context from the email thread. Here I have an email message from Patty and this is probably not a topic that I wanna just email back and forth on. Instead, I wanna set up a meeting. Here I have this email message selected. Right up on top in the home tab within the respond category, I see the option to reply with a meeting. I could also press the shortcut key, control, alt, and R. Let's click on this. This opens up a new email message and you'll see a few things here. For the title, it pulled in the title of the email thread. It also pulled in Patty, she was on the two line, so she's a required attendee. If anyone was on the CC line, they'd be included as an optional attendee. When I look down below, it automatically turns it into a Teams meeting. And if I scroll down, it preserves all of the content of the message. This makes it a lot easier to set up a meeting, especially if you wanna discuss an email thread. Tip number four, and this is similar to the previous tip where we set up a meeting, but instead with this one, we're going to set up an appointment. 
Right here, I received an email from Nestor and he keeps bugging me about investing in Bitcoin. It looks like he's made a pretty substantial amount of money. Now, he keeps telling me that I'm going to miss the train on this, and so maybe I should set aside some time where I can investigate if it makes sense for me. To set up an appointment, I can click on this email message and I can drag and drop it down to the calendar icon. Once I hover over, I'll release. This opens up a new appointment and it pulls in the subject of the email. It also pulls in all of the context. All I need to do now is select a date and a time and my appointment is ready to go. Tip number five, you can very easily recreate a meeting on your calendar. Tomorrow we have a new cookie brainstorming session coming up and we just have an hour set aside for this. It's probably not gonna be enough time to come up with some new amazing cookie recipes. So I wanna make sure I set up a subsequent meeting. Now I could go in and set up a whole new meeting, invite all the same people, provide all the same context, or I could simply click on this meeting, press control and then drag over and I now have a new meeting. Now it's not formalized yet. I need to click in and send it to all of the meeting participants. Here I've clicked into the meeting and then I'll click on send and that meeting is now formalized. That was pretty easy. Tip number six, I can change the time scale that's shown within Outlook. By default, when you look at the calendar here, it shows 30 minute increments, but what if I want more granularity or maybe less granularity? I can come over to the left-hand side where I see the time scale. I can right click and I can change it to any one of these values here. So let's say I want to set up some 45 minute meetings. Here I'll change the scale to 15 minutes. Here now you see a lot more details and I could highlight a 45 minute slot right here. If I want to change back, I simply right click and here I could switch it back to the default of 30 minutes. Tip number seven, you can very easily show multiple time zones on your Outlook calendar. One of my designers at the Kevin Cookie company, Grady, works and lives in Hawaii, and he's requested that we meet at 10 a.m. on Friday. Now, he's thinking about his local time zone, so I have to do the math to convert it. Luckily, Outlook can help me with that. Here, once again, I'll go over to the left-hand side where I see the time. I can right-click, and there's an option to change the time zone. Let's click on this. This opens up calendar settings and here in the time zone section, I can see that my default time zone is currently set to Seattle. And here I can add up to three time zones total. So let me click on this one right here with Hawaii and it's currently set to the Hawaii time zone, but I could choose whatever time zone I want. Next, I'll click on okay. Now on my calendar, I can see the Hawaii time zones alongside Seattle, and it looks like 10 a.m. is 1 p.m. in Seattle, so I could click here and then I could set up the meeting. As an alternative, I can also go into a meeting invitation, and remember Grady who's in Hawaii said he wants to meet at 10 a.m. Right over here, I can check this box for time zones, and here I can set it to the Hawaiian time zone. So there's 10 a.m., and then on my calendar, it'll show up as 1 p.m. Pacific time. Tip number eight, you can view other calendars side by side with your own calendar. And along with that, you could even overlay these other calendars on top of your calendar. Right here, we can see my upcoming week at the Kevin Cookie Company. And we've also created a company-wide calendar that includes all of the different cookie holidays throughout the world. Over on the left-hand side, I see that other calendar. So I'll click on this one, and now I can see my calendar right next to all of the cookie holidays. Right up here, you'll see that we're celebrating Philippines National Cookie Day tomorrow. Right now, I see them side by side. If I wanna see it overlaid on top of my calendar, I can simply come up here, click on this arrow icon, and right now I can see the company calendar on top of my calendar. If I wanna create an event on the cookie holiday calendar, I can simply select this one as the active calendar, and now I can create an event. But if I wanna create an event on my own calendar, I could come up here, click on calendar. This is now the active calendar and I can create an event here. To remove the overlay, I can click on this arrow and this will push it so it's side by side again. And once I'm done looking at this calendar, I can click on the X up here. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I get other calendars in here so I could see them side by side or so I could overlay them? Well, right up here on top, you can add additional calendars. You can add other people's calendars from your organization. You could even find calendars on the internet. Maybe your favorite sports team has a calendar or you could even create a new blank calendar and then you can share it with others so you can work together on a shared calendar. Tip number nine, you can open up a new window for your calendar so you can look at your calendar alongside your email. 
Right now I have my calendar open, but if I wanna to jump to my email, then I lose context of my calendar. Instead, I can leave my calendar open all the time as well. Right down here in the bottom left-hand corner, I can right-click on the calendar, and there's the option to open in new window. Let's click on this. This now opens up another instance of my calendar. I could put this on a different monitor, or I could put it over to one side of my screen. And over here, I could jump into my mail, and if I open up this again, now I have my mail and my calendar both open at the same time. Tip number 10, you can use color to better visualize your calendar. Now right now, all of my upcoming meetings and appointments are just in the default or the standard blue. Here, if I right click on the calendar, I can change the default color. Maybe I wanna go with just a calming green. But maybe I have some meetings coming up that really need my attention. Here, for example, Patty scheduled a meeting with me to talk about the New York flagship store issues. And before this meeting, I need to make sure I think of some excuses, or sorry, rather rationale for why we're having these different issues. I could use categories to do this. To set up categories, click on the meeting item, and this opens up the meeting ribbon up on top. Over here, I see different categories. I could go with one of these predefined categories, or I could even set up my own. I'll click on all categories. Right here, once again, I see all of the different categories. I could create my own, or I could even rename some of these. I'll just use one of these existing categories, the yellow category. One thing that's really neat is over on the right-hand side, I can also set a shortcut key to toggle this category on. I'll go with Control F2 and then click on OK. Back within the calendar now, with this item selected, I can press Control F2 and that'll toggle it yellow. So this way, I definitely won't miss that this meeting is coming up, so this way I'll have some time to prepare. If I press Control F2 again, that'll toggle off the color. Tip number 11, I can change my work hours in Outlook. If we look over on my calendar on the left-hand side, you'll see that right here, it's a grayish color, but as soon as we hit 8 a.m. all the way through 5 p.m., it's a little bit lighter. This indicates that these are my core working hours, and once again, past 5 p.m., it's a little bit darker. When someone goes to schedule a meeting with me, they'll see that these are my core working hours. Now, if you know me at the Kevin Cookie Company, eight to five is a really long day. I wanna cut down on when people schedule meetings with me. Over here, I'll right click on my calendar and then I'll go down to calendar options. Within calendar options, I can adjust my work hours and eight to five, once again, that's a really long day. Let me instead shift that. Maybe let's say I start at 10 a.m. and I should probably be out by about, let's say 2 p.m. You know, I'll work really efficiently in between those four hours. I'll leave the days as is, but I could adjust those as well. Once I'm all done, I'll click on OK. Back within my calendar now, you'll see that my core hours now show up between 10 and 2. So hopefully this influences when people schedule meetings with me. Hopefully this lightens my meeting load. We'll see what happens. Tip number 12, you can bring even more power into your Outlook calendar by using add-ins. Back in the mail view on the home tab, all the way over on the right hand side, you have the option to get third party add-ins. Let's click on this. This opens up a prompt where you can add hundreds of different add-ins into Microsoft Outlook. You might be wondering, well, are there any good ones for calendaring? One of my favorites is called Find Time. Here, I'll click on this. With Find Time, if you're having difficulty meeting with others, maybe they have a really busy calendar, maybe they work in a different company and you can't see their free busy data, with Find Time, you can propose a few times and then others can vote on it. So it makes it really easy to find a time that works for everyone. Another reason I also love this add-in, when I worked at Microsoft, I worked on the incubation team that launched Find Time. So you should definitely give it a try. Tip number 13, you can set meetings to automatically start late or end early. When you look at my calendar here, I have a lot of meetings that just run up into the next meeting and there's no buffer in between. There's no time to go to the bathroom or grab a drink of water. Luckily, we can change this using the settings. Here, I'll click on the calendar, right click, and let's go down to calendar options. Within calendar options, right near the top, here I could toggle this on. I can set a meeting to either start late or end early. I'll go with end early. Right down here for shorter meetings, if it's less than an hour, I can set it to five minutes. Here, I'll go with that. And maybe if the meeting's longer than, let's say an hour, I can have it end 10 minutes early. I'll select 10 minutes and then click on OK. Here, I'll try to schedule an hour meeting now. Let me click on new meeting request. 
Here within the new meeting request, you'll see that the end time is automatically truncated by 10 minutes. So we're gonna go from two to 2.50. So finally people have some time for a bio break. Tip number 14, and unfortunately this is the very last tip of today, but this is a good one. I'm gonna show you how you can make it easier to look at your calendar. And no, I'm not gonna show you how you could just magically make meetings disappear. Instead, I'm going to show you how you can use dark mode. Here within the calendar, simply right click on your calendar and go down to calendar options. Within calendar options, over on the left hand side, click on general and right down here, you have the option to change the office theme. This will change the office theme across all of your different office apps. Right here, I'll click black and then I'll click on okay. And look at this, the calendar already looks better. It's a little bit easier on my eyes. And maybe in the future, I'll come up with a tip where maybe I could cut down on your meeting load. All right, if you learn some new tips that you're gonna put to use, please give this video a thumbs up. To see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.